But what was a classic match? Kenny Omega and Phoenix for the title. That's super. I think this is probably the best television match that AEW has ever had. If not, it's I mean, I mean, as count far on one as, hand. I mean, as far as a television match, you know, like like you know, you could say like that that crazy street fight with the best friends and Santana and Ortiz, but that's completely different. But as far as like an in ring wrestling match, I would say that the three best matches on in Dynamite history would be. This match, the Nick Jackson Ray Phoenix match, and the Kenny Omega Pac match, and this match you could argue was the best of the three. I mean, and I, I would even say it was the best of the three. So I would say, as an in ring wrestling match, it was the best match in Dynamite history. Um, phenomenal match. You know what I would say is you could you could compare this in some ways to an Ibushi Naito match where it's just two guys who they will do anything. And they'll do any spot, and they'll do all sorts of crazy shit. And in fact, there was a German. Oh, the German Phoenix on the head? dropped him right on his head, and it was worse than anything in the Ibushi Naito match at the Tokyo Dome. There were two or three things that really worried me in the match, but, I mean, from both guys, I mean, it's just... But there were some unbelievable... You know, Phoenix did some unbelievable stuff, and... and, and Dude, you know, Phoenix was on fire in this match. He hit everything, and uh, amazingly at this point, like, he didn't get hurt. Kenny Omega didn't get hurt. Apparently, they were both fine backstage, well, which if you watch the match... Well, I mean, as, as Lance Storm always tells me when I say they didn't get hurt when on, on matches like that, it's like, you know, they will because um, you... You get you fall on your head that much, you're gonna fuck up your neck. It's just it's just an it's just inevitable. Um, and they did not know, suffer an acute injury during this performance. Yeah, but I it mean, required thing, medical attention. How about that? Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, it's like uh, Omega is such a fantastic wrestler, and and if he doesn't fall on his neck once or on his head once in the entire match it's still going to be the best match ever in dynamite history anyway well so, to be to be fair it, I, I don't remember exactly what the spot was but the spot was something it was like it was, omega it was, did a roll and then he got hit with the german in the middle of it it was something where like there was momentum going into it, and so I don't think that by design his idea was to land on his head. Sure I think did. that just the way that it went with the momentum that he had coming up, the dude just threw him, and he ends up landing on top of his head. Unlike I've seen in well, Bushi Naito quite, matches where like that was their plan was to land on their head. I don't think that he meant to land on his head here. Yeah, it wasn't quite on his head, but it was it was still it was it was definitely scary looking. I, I just worry about these guys, you know, that because one of the things is like, you know, again, I grew up and, and again, watching and, and, I, and I was feeling the same way watching these guys like kill themselves in these main events, you know, like Cobb and Takagi and all these guys that are just the next day. They're just hurting so bad. And I was always like from the school of wrestling where you you might be sore the next day and everything, but you can go like 300 days a year. And obviously with this style that people work now. Nobody could do 300 days a year working like this. It's it's and and it's good that they don't have. That's to. That's why they work like this. Yeah, but they're still they're still like they're giving everything they have as opposed to, um, you know, it's like they don't have to give everything you have in these big matches and and um, you know, it's like you can do like normal stuff and then throw a few things in that are safe. And Dave, you, you can, can still... shout this to the moon. But I know. like this is what they do. I, I agree a thousand percent. I think that it's it's insane some of the things that I see, but like that's just what they're doing. And actually, if anything, we should be thankful that a lot of these guys are only working one day a week or less now, because they'd probably still be doing this if they were working three days a week. Well, on big shows they would. I mean, um, because the the drive to have these great matches is there. But the thing is, is like these guys are already having the great matches without those spots. Um, you don't need to do them. But this, you know, yeah, Phoenix was on fire. Kenny Omega, fantastic match layout, super match. Um, and then the angle at the end was was great too. I mean, I thought the last the last thirty minutes of this television show were were just you know so top notch. I mean, like, I mean, it's it 
it's almost like when I was watching it, it's almost like this is what pro, pro wrestling should be is is the last 30 minutes. Now, you can't do an angle like that every week because if you did, then the angles would mean nothing. But they don't. And so it was it worked out. Well, Kenny hits a one winged angel, gets the pin. And afterwards, Callis cuts a promo and he says, we're going to give everybody more than they expected tonight. We're going to finish off this Phoenix. And he shows a video on the screen of of the rest of the crew. Kingston, Butcher, and Blade have destroyed uh, Pack and Kenta. And Phoenix is there and Callis tells him to go finish him off. So Callis, or Kenny goes to finish him off. Moxley hits the ring with the barbed wire bat. They're brawling all over the place. He's hitting everybody with the bat. And f- suddenly... Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson hit the ring and they start beating down Moxley. And they're beating him up and they lay him out with the magic killer and they're hitting him with the bat. And to their credit, the announcers are at least saying, people are intimidated because of this bat and these three guys here to come out and make the save. But actually, people still made the save. Everybody starts jumping the barricade, all the wrestlers in the crowd. The heels are just, Gallows is powerbombing these dudes through tables outside. They're just running roughshod, killing everybody. And finally, the Young Bucks run down, and they hit the ring, supposedly to talk some sense into Kenny and the Good Brothers. But then Matt helps take out Pillman and Griff Garrison. And they lay him out, and Good Brothers, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks, they all do the too sweet as the show goes off the air. And that was a show. It was a hell of an angle. It was awesome. The last 30 minutes were awesome. It was a great show. It was, it was uh, yeah, really great show. Did you notice Nick didn't do a super kick there in that last segment? Yeah, it was Matt who did the super kick. Yeah. So, Why? story I heard is that in the opening match, Jack went for the 630 or whatever. Right. And Nick got his knees up. Yeah. And whatever happened, happened. But Jack landed so hard on his legs that Nick thought he broke one of his legs. Oh, my God. So, if you watch the rest of the match... Nick's doing the rest of the match thinking his leg might be broken. And he came out at the end of the show and he did the whole angle. He's trying not to limp and didn't throw the super kick because his leg hurt. Oh, man. Hopefully he's all right, but... Hopefully he's all right. Those guys are getting banged up a lot. Well, dude... It'd be too, it'd be too bad if he got hurt now because they're on a... They're definitely on, you know, on the roll. You know, they're really on the roll right now. Well, I guess if he is injured, I mean, they just set this group up so the Good Brothers can do some tag matches here for a while. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.